Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day. Another relatively crazy news day. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The People's Bank of China, the PBOC, has claimed that its digital currency can now said to be ready. According to the People's Banks of China, Deputy Minister Mu Changchu, Chun, a prototype that adopts blockchain architecture has been successfully developed after five years of research. One more time, they've been developing this for five years. And when I first read this, I it caught my attention very fast because if you remember, keeping in mind a lot of the other stuff that we've been talking about before, it's very fascinating how many other countries and institutions and banks and corporations were talking negatively about Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space and how they did not like it and how they saw no future in it especially China after slightly banning it. And then we come to realize that since 2014, China has been developing a digital currency. His announcement made at the Chinese Finance 40 Forum was reported by local news site Shanghai Securities News on the 10th of August. Mu said issuing a digital currency using a pure blockchain architecture would be difficult to achieve in a country as big as China because retailers require high concurrency performance. The digital currency is also said to adopt a two-tier operating system to cater to the nation's complex economy with a vast territory and large population with people banks of China on a upper level and commercial banks on a secondary level. According to Mu, this would improve accessibility, enhance adoption rates among the public, and promote innovation among commercial entities Long story short, uh, regardless of what they say, what's actually going to happen is, is that I'm pretty sure as many other countries are trying to move to a more cashless society because governments want to be able to pay attention to and know exactly where money is flowing or exactly what people are buying. I assume within the next three years, it will be mandated that within China, people must use this or some sort of equivalent to this. Right now, a lot of people within the Chinese borders typically use uh, it's WeChat and a couple of other things. I don't, I don't think Weibo is one of them. I know WeChat is one. I can't, Anyway, the point is, is that most transactions are already tracked, but there's still a situation where certain parts of people in China decide to use cash, usually older people, but they're going to, I assume they're going to try and phase that out relatively soon. And as far as them talking about a, uh, what's the word, uh, a, a pure blockchain architecture, I'm pretty sure they had no intention of using anything that was remotely decentralized or that has other nodes located around the country in people's homes. It's fairly obvious that the government or rather the Bank of China is going to try and have complete control over every single aspect of this. According to the People Bank, People's Bank of China executive, the digital currency is designed to be suitable for small scale retail, high frequency business scenarios. And then the other story comes down to the fact that a lot of people are now... It's believed that digital currencies, not the ones that we use, but other ones created by banks and institutions, and more so along the lines of stable coins, what have you, uh, will allow further control over people and what's being bought, what's being purchased, what's being sold. And also before, this was also a major topic in 2018 when there were a number of discussions before Congress and the Senate, when they were asking if, uh, this was even before Libra, when they were asking if Bitcoin was an actual threat to the U.S. economy. And one of the major things that people were discussing as far as the creation of a government or bank-backed digital currency was that governments and banks would then have the option to should there be some type of an economic crisis, simply be able to logically just hit a button and freeze everyone's accounts. Because what we've seen before, for those who do not know what a bank run is, it's pretty much when people run to the bank to take out their money. And this has been detrimental to many other economies around the world. This has happened multiple times. You can Google the phrase bank run. And you'll see that this, uh, every other time that this has happened in, I want to say even the last 20 to 30 years, just to kind of narrow it down a little bit, there have been, uh, protests because people have not been able to get their money out of the bank. There have been people standing outside of banks with guns telling people you cannot access your money. Uh, it never really ends uh, well or in a good way. So on top of being able to tell people exactly when and where you can use your money, being able to track them with their money, you're also then able to, like I said, should something happen and people try to take their money out, 
uh, take their money and try to push it into a cryptocurrency or simply move it overseas. You can simply lock their accounts because you control the entire system. The other part of that, for those who are not looking at the screen, it says a threat to the United States. It is widely believed that as cash flows freely around many different countries around the world and governments typically don't know exactly what's happening with the cash, they typically have an idea sometimes as to exactly how much money they've printed and how much may actually be in circulation. When you know the exact amount because it's sitting on a computer screen, you then have the option to simply uh, burn more or delete or destroy some of your currency that you don't simply want to be in circulation. What this ends up happening is, is that usually we've seen other countries before who try to uh, devalue their currency either by printing more of it or try to increase the value of their currency by printing less of it or announcing that they're going to be printing less of it. And this is sometimes why we see that other currencies rise in value against other currencies because this one, in essence, air quotes, is rarer. So then what happens when one of the largest other economic powerhouses in the world decides to create their own cryptocurrency and then also they realize that if they just delete, you know, five, six, seven percent of it, that's not actually being used because they can see by the metrics on the computer, their, their currency goes up in value next to the U.S. dollar. And then, you know, so it's it's a it's a, it's a bit of a tug of war that's also uh, beginning. Here's the actual news article right here. I do not read Mandarin, but for those of you who do, here's the actual article where they discuss the actual uh, creation of their digital currency. Uh, based on conflicting reports, that's kind of the nice way I want to say it. I've seen around, where is it right here? Ba -ba 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 -ba. The People's Bank of China is planning to launch a state-backed currency by the end of this year. I've seen a couple of places that say that they plan on doing it sometime early 2020. I've also seen a number of places saying that, like this article right here, yep, yeah, there's a digital currency is ready and that they plan on launching it sometime during this year. Uh, August, September, October, November, December. That is the next five months that one of the largest countries and the most economically powerful countries in the world could have their own digital currency. Completely insane. I think this is all being pushed a lot farther. One, first of all, it's clear, and it's very odd to even think of this. Bitcoin wasn't that powerful in 2014, so to figure out that in two th five years ago, China was already developing something, I guess in uh, as an answer to if Bitcoin ever did become large enough, but I assume this has also been uh, cranked up a couple of notches simply because we know that Facebook is also planning on launching their own currency. It's kind of weird. I want to see exactly how this is going to happen. I assume that this will uh, play out a bit better than the um, than the Venezuelan cryptocurrency. So China is not the first one to do this. I think there was also, I'm pretty sure there's also a, a coin in Dubai. I'm not sure if it's used, but I remember definitely seeing that a company had created a, a cryptocurrency that was exclusively for Dubai. But I think China's will probably be the uh, more successful because they can tell their people exactly what they can and cannot do. But the point is, it appears that uh, China coin is ready. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up, in really weird news, Ethereum Classic Labs' Steven Lo Loja says that many top cryptocurrencies would be wrecked, that is R-E-K-T, by Ethereum Classic if it removed the word Ethereum from its name in a tweet posted on the 11th of August, Loja, who works as technology coordinator at Ethereum Classic Labs, wrote, and I do quote, Opinion. Many hashtag cryptocurrency in the top market cap would be absolutely wrecked by Ethereum Classic if we removed Ethereum from the brand. I know we are original Ethereum project, but maybe this can be water cooler chatter at Summit A. Eh? End quote. As Cointelegraph previously reported, Loja's reminder that Ethereum Classic is the original Ethereum project refers to the fact that the coin runs on the original version of the blockchain before it was hard forked in 2016 in response to the DAO scandal. I think what ended up happening was is that I think money was lost in the DAO. I think it's 
decentralized autonomous organization organization and i think money was lost in it and they decided to fork it to actually get the money back because the time frame hadn't been that long people said no don't do that it makes your project more centralized and this is why we have ethereum classic so the original chain and ethereum which is the chain that forked in order to be able to i think it was over 100 million dollars it, it, it was a huge amount that they ended up trying to get back but this is the uh the logic behind it after the hard fork classic was added to the cryptocurrency's name to distinguish it from the successor ether uh with ether currently ranked the largest altcoin by market cap ethereum classic lags some way behind it in his 21st spot on the rankings list i don't know if this was a joke i don't know if uh this person was serious remember i mentioned before and i've mentioned it many times and i'll continue to do it until people actually understand the logic behind it a lot of the coins uh bcash sv ethereum classic bitcoin gold any of them only retain the spots that they have right now because they bear the name of another stronger coin if ethereum classic took out ethereum from its name i don't think they would just call their coin classic but even if they called it medupola classic or just some other name nobody would use it i can assure you and even people who are holding these coins you know that i'm telling the truth there is not a chance on this earth that you would be holding bcash or sv if the name was like food coin or back rub coin or hair gel coin you wouldn't hold it the only reason why they retain attention is because they have those names i would love to see i would love l-o-v-e if ethereum classic dropped ethereum from its name and we would see exactly how quickly they would fall into obscurity there have been and the the most interesting part is this is why i said i wonder if it's a joke because if you've been into cryptocurrency for at least two years you know that there have been many other coins that have tried to fork off of ethereum that have forked off of bitcoin that have forked off of Dash and many other coins, and they don't use the original name. So they won't have Ethereum in their name. They won't have Bitcoin. They won't have any other thing. It'll simply be called something else. And I remember when they were creating these websites talking about, we forked it. We found a way to make it better. We can now do 300 transactions per second. We are based off of Bitcoin. We can do this though. We have this implementation. We have so and so and so. And they tried to brag and talk about exactly how quick and fast and awesome and amazing their coins were, but no one used them. Why did no one use them? Because no one cares about another coin that doesn't have these original names. And even more so, we're seeing a, a slight solidification in the actual coins that we're seeing in the top 50. I want to say top 25, give or take. Uh, not even them retaining their places, but as far as them becoming a, a crypto household name. Uh, so I don't think they're going to do it. I assume this was just a, a random tweet proposal. But I think it's kind of weird to think Oh gosh, it even says classic X here. Uh, that, would be, that would be great. I would love to see how many people would use a classic X or, and I mean it really, if, if Bcash and SV took out Bitcoin from their name, the value would plummet overnight. Anyway, I thought this article was interesting. Uh, let me know what you think because, and I, and I mean that honestly, let me know if you honestly think that Ethereum Classic would be able to hold its weight if they took the name Ethereum away. It's already the 21st coin. And I know someone else mentioned before when I was talking about Ethereum Classic, they said, I think that Grayscale, one of Grayscale's largest holdings, I think is also Ethereum Classic. Yeah, you have to understand that people speculate on other coins and simply because if, if they had a large amount of Ethereum, they probably had a large amount of Ethereum Classic from the fork. And also, uh, it was also a relatively cheap coin. Remember, years ago, when the fork first happened, uh, people thought that Ethereum Classic was going to be the number two coin, or rather, it would follow closely behind Bitcoin. Uh, that did not happen anyway. I could go on for hours about this. Without further ado, let's move on. Next up, the United Kingdom arm of Coinbase appears to be dropping support for the privacy-focused cryptocurrency known as Zcash, according to customers. Because Coinbase UK is sending letters out warning people that they will need to convert their Zcash holdings or remove them to an external wallet by the 26th of August. Here's the actual tweet right here. 
The cryptocurrency exchange gave no specific reason for the removal of the cryptocurrency, but said all remaining Zcash balances on the 26th of August will be automatically converted to British pounds in users' accounts. The electric coin company developers of Zcash appeared to confirm the news, saying in a tweet on Friday, they said that those affected by blah, 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 take your coins out or transfer it back. I assume my assumption is as governments don't necessarily care for uh, private transaction coins, they were probably told to remove so, or it could have just been something uh, internal where they decided to simply not have to deal with it anymore because maybe regulators came to them. We've seen this before in the past. We've seen other situations where coins were removed from exchanges and it usually a couple of days later, we found out that it was either regulators, it has something to do, no, still regulators, or it had to do with uh, internal focus of the company and exactly where they were trying to go. Anyway, uh, for those of you who are in the United Kingdom, uh, check your holdings. If you're holding Zcash, you may decide to transfer it or sell it to something else. Anyway, that's the little tidbit of news. This was kind of everywhere as well. So I was like, okay, why not talk about it for a couple of seconds? Because some people may actually hold that coin. For those of you who have not been paying attention the last week, just the last week, nothing more. Uh, the economic world is in a bit of turmoil. Market intel from Goldman Sachs suggests investors should capitalize on the current price drop of Bitcoin and buy it in a series of slides prepared by a technical analysis team and sent out to some institutional clients. Goldman included one that said the short-term target for Bitcoin is $13,971 and that investors should consider buying on any dips in the current scenario. The investment bank said that based on its Elliott Wave analysis, Bitcoin would find support around $11,094 and that there is scope for a move higher to $12,916 and then to $13,000, almost touching $14,000. The last couple of days have been quite interesting, especially if you've been paying attention to the uh, less than dramatic price movements of Bitcoin, uh, tying also vaguely directly into this as well. For those of you who do not know, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, has delayed making a decision on three Bitcoin exchange traded funds proposed, proposals on Monday. The ETFs proposed earlier this year by asset managers, I'm not reading out all those names, and filed with the New York Stock Exchange ARCA and CBOEBZX are all seeking to become the first such investment vehicle based on Bitcoin. The filings were published in the Federal Register in February and June, kicking off the large, legal, largely legally mandated 240-day clock on a final decision. Bug in my face. Uh, a couple days ago, people were, I think, getting... And it's, 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 it's odd. I, I don't know why people do this. People were getting excited about the possibility of the SEC possibly deciding or allowing a Bitcoin ETF to go through. For those of you who were not here in 2018, 2018, about nine months of it, were focused on a Bitcoin ETF. It was widely believed that the price of Bitcoin in the wider cryptocurrency space would not move until we had approval from the SEC for an exchange traded fund that was based on Bitcoin. What ended up happening was, I think we had a situation where I think seven companies had come forward announcing that they wanted to uh, launch an ETF. It didn't end up happening. The SEC kept on taking their time. I don't assume any time within the next two years two years that the SEC will give a thumbs up to any Bitcoin ETF, it also doesn't matter. And I think a lot of times when the market ends up going down because we do not have an ETF or because one has not been approved by a government agency, it's kind of weird. Uh, so this is, first of all, I didn't even want to talk about this. I hate discussing Bitcoin ETFs, but this was on every single Bitcoin news outlet out there. So also like all of these tie directly into each other. It says gold breakout could jolt Bitcoin above $12,000. Within the last couple of weeks, gold has been moving at an exceptional rate because of what's been happening around the world. We have a large, it's, this is more so to kind of just let everyone know exactly what's been happening in the, in the traditional financial world. As the economies around the world have not been doing well, 
A lot of analysts have been expecting for Bitcoin to continue to do well and to move up further. And this is why we had a lot of talk before. Remember last week where people were talking about and even Goldman Sachs right here talking about that they believe that Bitcoin could attempt to try and reach $14,000 once again. Same exact thing has been happening as the world has not been doing well. Right here, it says gold prices hit $1,575 in three months, and people expect $1,600 in six months, this was said by Goldman Sachs. Top of that as well, it says the U.S. labeling China as a currency manipulator is absurd, threatens global recession, warns advisors. Prices across stocks, bonds, mutual funds, everything else except for what is typically seen as a a safe haven for many other investments, i.e. like a hedge to get away from the traditional markets, has been performing exceptionally well. And a lot of people are now thinking uh, that it might not just have been uh, wishful thinking that got Bitcoin to where it was, that it simply might have been uh, people and other analysts realizing that the world was faltering economically, nice way of saying it. And therefore, people were buying into Bitcoin as well as other alternative assets. And this is why we also saw a couple of weeks ago, people were stating that according to their research, that it appeared that economic uh, institutions or institutional investors were actually the reason for Bitcoin's rise because they saw what was happening over the last couple of months or rather saw where all of this was heading. The fact, even though it's, it even says it right here, it says a fellow at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences says that the US is trying to start a currency war. Something is happening around the world. Uh, hmm. It's sad because there will be, at some point, no one knows if it's going to be this year or next year or the following year, there will at some point be a, an economic recession. And the people who are going to be left in dust are the people who either don't have investments at all, don't know how to hedge against anything, or simply don't have cryptocurrencies to be able to make money as the economy is actually going down. And this looks like we're getting very, very close to this event actually happening. Also, Argentinian stocks and many other stocks around the world actually ended up going down. I think Argentinian stocks ended up falling anywhere between, I think, 30 to 50%. This happened, I believe, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. On top of that as well, the Argentinian peso, I believe, fell, I think, between, I think it was fluctuating, but I saw indications between 15 and 50% after an election actually ended up happening there. So this also just happened yesterday, and this is also causing, I think the US dollar had gone up in value. The British pound had also, I think, continued falling in value because of fears of a no deal Brexit. And on top of that as well, for those of you who not really haven't been paying attention to any type of economic news, it says Hong Kong's next crisis may be economic as protest fallout grows. For those of you who do not know what's been happening for the last couple of months it hasn't been a day it hasn't been a week it's been months at least three or four what's been happening inside of hong kong is that the government is trying to create a law that pretty much says if you are in hong kong and the chinese government who's to the north of them deems you to be illegal you've done something wrong that they can expedite you to china to be uh punished penalized in some sort of way part of the problem is that I'm not going to get political anyway What's been happening is, is that people logically, imagine being in your country, imagine being in your own country, and someone tells you the country to the north of you uh, thinks you're a criminal and therefore you have to be uh, expedited and or taken out of your country to serve prison time up north in another country that you do not belong to and you do not live in. So people there have been protesting for a number of months now, and what's been happening is uh, there mm, less people are visiting Hong Kong because they do not want to be involved in the protests. I'm not going to tell you exactly what's been happening at the protests. I would appreciate it if you Googled it yourself to see exactly how people there are being treated as they're trying not to be sent to another country or simply for just normal economic freedom. They don't want to be controlled by someone else because they are their own people. People like to live their lives their own way and not have to someone else to tell them exactly what's going on. So what's been happening is that protesters throughout the country in their response to saying, no, we don't want to be expedited to another country where we do not belong to, to be punished, have been protesting nonstop. And they've been, I think, destroying government buildings. They've been shutting down other things, highways, roads, what have you. Uh, but this is also causing economic tension because... What's happening is that China is trying to get control of the situation in Hong Kong. 
What's happening is, is that the Hong Kong economy is also suffering because of the protests. On top of that as well, while China is also trying to deal with the entire economic situation between them and the United States being labeled as a currency manipulator, they're also trying to deal with the fact that other countries don't want to fall under their control. And all of this is happening all at the exact same time. That's not even the news of what's happening in Venezuela, what's been happening in Russia, what's been happening in many other places as other global economies just also aren't doing very well. So now it makes a bit more sense to everyone out there as to exactly uh, why the price of gold and over the last couple of months, why the price of Bitcoin have been going up. Because typically, uh, especially if you are very deep into finance, you can see the signs written on the wall. You can see exactly where most of these things are going to happen. You can kind of tell beforehand that things may not do well and people start to put their money into alternative investment vehicles. But yeah, just thought I'd give everyone a little bit of a heads up, if you will, as to exactly uh, what's been going on. And even up here, it says Germany is flirting with recession after investor confidence falls. This is not an isolated incident. And this has been happening all around the world. Uh, so this is why we keep getting those uh, bits of news talking about that now may be a time to buy Bitcoin, as it very well might be. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Mohair Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Brady Neils, Woody and Daisy, Triple MNJ, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bank Roll Network, Adobo, Mill Weezy, JR, Mechanic, Strange Radio Central, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Cryptopolis, Nicholas Run Earth, One Piece, One Love, Damien, Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Rich the Third, Vlad the Impaler, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Alex Templeton, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, and the, one of the newest uh, additions, Miller hits chest every day and Kyle skips leg day. Thank you all very much for your support. At the moment, the market's not really doing much. It's kind of sitting and moving sideways. Some coins are trying to, or rather there's a lot of fluctuation to, uh, between many of the other coins. Uh, we'll see exactly where this ends up going by the end of this week. We had a lot of news, especially uh, yesterday and also a couple of days before where people were talking about that they believed, I believe, by this week that Bitcoin could try to hit 15,000. And also because of the constant uh, tight range motion, we're getting those calls once again uh, that Bitcoin could either go up or go down, but people are expecting a more dramatic scenario. People are talking about, or rather I've seen on the internet, people talking about that they believe that Bitcoin could be headed to 9,200 or trying to push upwards towards 14,000 once again. No one knows, and that's what makes it so uh, exciting is the word that I'm going to use. But at the moment, I think the market is simply waiting. We've reacted very well before on negative news. Uh, there's been, I mean, to be fair, the week has kind of just started. There's been a huge amount of negative news already this week as far as uh, economically wise. So let's see if the market continues to do what it was doing before. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever on this crazy planet you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening and i will most certainly be talking to you all soon see you